Okay, so for problem one, if we want to find f prime of x, this basically is going to involve using the chain rule. So we're going to use basically the power rule, taking the derivative of the outside, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of the outside is basically 7 times 2x to the 5th plus 5 to the 6th power. We keep the inside the same. We multiply this by the derivative of the inside which is going to be 4x is 4x, actually. And you'll get 28x times 2x squared plus 5 to the 6. So your answer will be not D. Okay, question number two. Problem two, we have, um, is this something where you can use um, the, the natural log rule or, or the U substitution technique? But once you start really getting good and familiar with logarithms, you can kind of see the pattern. But like you can factor out one third. So let's do that first. What, what happens is you can actually take out a three from the denominator. So that'll be like x plus four times dx. Then you can factor out a one third out of the whole or out of the whole integral. So it becomes one third times the integral of x plus four or one third times integral of one over x plus four dx. And then here, whenever you have one over x plus any number, like x plus 10, x minus 17, this will just automatically be the natural log of one over, uh, or just the natural log of whatever you have in the denominator. So for example, this will just be one third times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus four. And of course, add the constant C. Now, if you want me, if you want me to prove this, it's pretty um, pretty simple. Um, but we we just make the u x plus four, and du would just be dx, and this essentially just becomes one third times the integral of one over u du, and the antiderivative of one over u is is the natural log of the absolute value of u. So this becomes one third times the natural log of the absolute value of u plus your constant. And you replace u with the x plus four and you get this. So you end up with the same answer. So the answer would be. Problem three, okay, this is where we're gonna use the quotient rule. So we're gonna have that the derivative of f will be the denominator will be squared. So function denominator will be squared. So we just put all that in parentheses, the second power. And then we take the derivative of the top, which is gonna be negative x, or neg sorry, negative one times the the function in the bottom, so negative one times x cubed plus two minus, then we keep the top function as is, minus five minus x, group it up, times the derivative of the denominator. So the derivative of the, of the denominator would be three x squared. And from here, we can just simplify. So the, so the numerator becomes negative x cubed minus two, we get that this becomes a 15x squared minus 3x cubed in parentheses, so minus that, so minus 15x squared plus 3x cubed. All, on, all on, This is all on top. We just combine the x cubed, so we get 2x cubed on top. minus 15 x squared minus two all over x cubed plus two squared or plus two all in the second power. And so your answer will be C. All right, problem four, we're gonna use the trapezoidal sum rule. Here we're given a table that shows the velocity in miles per hour of a truck at these 
selected times, so 0, 0 0.5, 2, and 3, and their hours, so half an hour, two hours, three hours. And we're going to use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals sub indicated by the, by the table. So the subintervals, we're talking about t. So here we're talking about the first interval is 0 0.5, the second is 1.5, and the next one is going to be um, just 0 0.5 again. Well, not 0 0.5 again. Two to three is one. That's what I meant to say. Okay, so those are the set intervals. And if you want to find the approximate distance in miles that the truck traveled from t equals zero to t equals three, what you want to essentially do is look at this as the sum of the area of three trapezoids. So I'm going to draw a visual so you can get an, an idea of what this means. This is actually really simple, but I do notice that students get confused when they just try to memorize this. They, for some reason, they think it's harder than, than it actually is. But all you're doing is basically taking a, a trapezoid where the heights are 20, 60, 40, and 30. So we have a point at 0, 20. So over here, the height is 20, so 0, 20. The next one's at 0. 0.5. Sixty, so something like this. Not drawing the scale, so point five, comma sixty. So you can see that's our first trapezoid. The next one will go up at two, so this is point five. The next one will be at two, two forty. So maybe some again. Not drawing the scale. Just to give you an idea, so 240, so the next trapezoid will look like this. The next one will be at 330. So 330 is a little bit lower, a little bit higher than this, but a little bit lower than that. Okay, so what you have are three areas. You have A1, A2, A3. And since these are rectangles, to find the area of each of these, you know, technically these, these are trapezoids, you basically just take the averages of the heights multiplied by the width. So A1, or first let's just say the total area is A1 plus A2 plus A3. A1, you take the average of the sides or the heights you can think of, that'll be 20 plus 60. So 20 plus 60, the average of 20 plus 60 is 40. So you basically are going to take 40, 20 plus 60. And when I mean average, that's why you see this divided by two. This is just 40 times the width. So this times 0.5. That's A1, but it just comes down to 40 times 0.5 for that A1 plus A2. A2, you take the average of this side and this side, which is the average of 60 and 40. So 60 plus 40, which is just 50, so plus 50 times this width, which is just 1.5. 0.5 to 2 is, is 1.5 which is uh, again right up here, plus A3, you take the final average of this side and this side, 40 and 30, which would be 35, so 40 plus 30, over two times this, which is just times one, I'm barely squeeze it in there, but times one, so that's just 35, And this will add up to 20, 75, 81, 30. So your answer will be B. Now remember, since this is a non-calculator section, you, you're not going to have any tedious calculations or you're going to have decimals that you can't do in your head. And you don't have to do this. Again, you don't, I just drew it out just to help you get a visual. You know, since I'm teaching you, you don't have to do this. Once you get the idea in your head, you can realize, oh, just the average of this times this width, the average of these two. So like the average 
40 times 0.5, 50 times 1.5, 35 times one. Once you do plenty of these, you can start picking up on that pattern. So it won't be so like, you will, you'll be able to do this in less than a minute. All right, number five. If f of x is the function sine of x squared plus pi, and we want to find f prime of the square root of two pi. So let's first find what f prime of x is. We're going to use chain rule. So the derivative of the inside, which will be two x times the derivative of the outside, which will be the cosine of x squared plus pi. Now, all we're essentially doing is evaluating the function when x is the square root of two pi. So f prime of the square root of two pi will be two times the square root of two pi times the cosine of the square root of two pi squared. The square root of two pi squared, you square that square, you just get two pi plus pi in there. So what you really have is two times square root of two pi times the cosine of three pi. So you have two times the square root of two pi. Make sure you know your unit circle. Three pi will be on the left side. It's basically going to coincide with 180 degrees. Let me just draw the unit circle again if you need a refresher. Remember, if we start at zero, we go this way. Over here, that's pi. We keep on going counterclockwise. This is two pi. Another pi, you're going to be back here. So that's going to be negative one. So two times root two, two times the square root of two pi times negative one. So you get negative two times the square root of two pi. So your answer will be A.